okay, wait, what is this? <laughs> you know what? It was like, um, I don't know how to make this not something. It's not anything. It's not. <laughs> oh no. We went to that Live Tinted event together. Yes, yes. And I came home and I was talking to Jared. Yeah. And I felt so like elated and yep. giddy yep, and yep. happy. And then even actually you came over this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Is it sad? No, it's not sad. <laughs> like my eyes are watering already. I'm like, do I have allergies? Uh, no, but yeah. I just like, uh, like I've never loved anybody the way I love you. Oh, Shan. <laughs> oh, it is sad. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or you have a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to engage with your audience, have a beautiful website, and to sell anything from products to content to time, all in one place on your terms. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash for 10% off the purchase of a website or domain. Hi lovers, this is kind of an embarrassing video. And I'm trying to wrap my head and heart around why I feel embarrassed. Maybe it's just really vulnerable and scary to tell someone that, you know, to admit to someone that you haven't moved on, even if it's a friend. Um, this is actually the third installment of the videos that I've been doing with Andrea over the years. Of course, for those of you who are OGers know that I have been doing videos with Andrea for much, much longer than that. We have actually been friends and known each other since we were single digits, maybe eight, maybe nine, somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, then got really close in high school, even closer than that in our early 20s, had a major falling out. And then in my early to mid 30s, found our way back. And here I am in my late 30s, willing to say, can we try to get that old thing back? In addition to this being a journey that I've been on with Andrea, it's also a journey that I have been on with friendship overall, specifically in the past couple of years after I finished having kids, when I realized that this was a hole in my life that I wanted to actively fill. Now, at the end of this video, I'm actually gonna share my five commandments for friendships because a challenge that I have had, especially has been in the past years, I've been more intentional with it, is trying to really acknowledge uh, where aspirationally I want friends, but logically it doesn't make sense. And where logically I know I can actually show up and be a good friend right now. So I feel good about having that list. I'm excited to share that with you. But speaking of share, one of the things that I actually read before having this conversation with Andrea that really inspired and empowered me to say the things that were on my heart, but I felt maybe too proud or too icky to say out loud, came from this poet called David White. And this is from a book called Constellations and a section on friendship. Friendship is a mirror to presence and a testament to forgiveness. Friendship not only helps us see ourselves through another's eyes, but can be sustained over the years only with someone who has repeatedly forgiven us for our trespasses, as we must find it in ourselves to forgive them in turn. Without tolerance and mercy, all friendships die. A friend knows our difficulties and shadows and remains in sight, a companion to our vulnerabilities more than our triumphs. In the course of the years, a close friendship will always reveal the shadow in the other as much as ourselves. To remain friends, we must know the other and their difficulties and even their sins and encourage the best in them, not through critique, but through addressing the better part of them. Thus, subtly discourage what makes them smaller, less themselves, less generous. Through the eyes of a real friendship, an individual is larger than their everyday actions. And through the eyes of another, we receive a greater sense of our own personhood, one we can aspire to, the one whom they have faith in. Friendship is a moving frontier of understanding, not only of the self and the other, but also a possible and as yet unlived future. Friendships transcend disappearance. And obviously, all of that feels like it was written for myself and Andrea, but that last line really rang true for me because the way that I have felt about her and towards our connection, um, the way that I see her, although hasn't always been consistent, we haven't always been consistent in each other's lives, I've never forgotten that feeling. I've never forgotten our friendship. It's always been there. 
And um, I think rather than it being an undercurrent, I am ready to try my hand at it being something more. And uh, that's what I wanted to talk to her about. So let's get into it. What's weird about our relationship is I actually see it as like a soul person because I'm like, it has so many faces. Yeah. And uh, in an unexpected way. And I think what's fun and interesting is I'm like, we're older now. So now we almost get to reflect on it in a way that we didn't get to do when we were necessarily growing up or when you're maturing, when you're trying to like navigate and all those kind of things. But then at the same time, just to go back to like the girlfriends thing, like I have a lot of girlfriends that I would say, even if I don't talk to them all the time, when I do talk to them, it's like, it's, it's like a burst. It's like, I'm having this whole moment with you. I feel so connected to you. I feel so like, yes, yes, yes. I think without you realizing it maybe that I'm like, no, I have a special spot for you. That like you are, yeah, I feel, I feel the same way. I really do. I'm like, I love you. I'm like, Shannon's my ace moon coon. <laughs> I'm like a very specific friendship that I'm like, um, that I think many people probably observe with us and, and wish that they could enter, but don't know how to enter. I'm like, but I'm I want here. you to also acknowledge <laughs> and recognize for me that this is actually me trying to be friends with you on your level. <laughs> because I think in the past, I've been very much like, it's Andrea's just, my friend. <laughs> just that. Just that. But now I'm like, no, <laughs> she has other friends. And if you want to be her friend, you, you have need to be to friends be, with everybody. Yeah. It's not, well, that's the thing. I don't, I don't necessarily see it. I try to be aware rather of like, of the, of everybody's position. I think that my thing is trying to, to manage all of my, the way I like to be friends, my friendships, and then the people that I know want to be included. Cause I do have that dynamic. So yeah, maybe now when you're saying it, it's like, I do have many loves. <laughs> I, I'm like, oh, I don't realize it because I'm trying to balance it. But I, yeah, I just think I'm a girl's girl. But I definitely think anybody that, any of my close friends, my very, very, like they're tight with me, they would see us as a very specific dynamic. Yes. And they'd probably say the same to you. Mm. That they'd be like, oh, I don't see that as when I can enter. I see that as, that's a whole other thing, which is why I'm like, uh, I think of Sarah. Sarah, somebody, oh, there's my girl. <laughs> What's going on, Miss Thing? What's you wanna, up? You wanna talk about friendship? You can just sit in the middle. You wanna just sit? Just lay down, maybe, because if you sit, you might block Andrea. <laughs> Pardon the interruption, promise. Quick word from our sponsor, Squarespace. I'll talk about my three favorite features. One, Squarespace Blueprint AI and SEO tools. Start a completely personalized website with the new guided design system, Squarespace Blueprint. Then, launch your site and get discovered fast with the integrated, optimized SEO tools so you show up more often to more people and grow the way you want to. Two, flexible payments. For those of you selling things, make checkout seamless for your customers with simple but powerful payment tools, except credit cards, PayPal, Apple Pay, and in eligible countries, offer customers the option to buy now and pay later. Last but not least, Fluid Engine. With Fluid Engine, the next generation website editor from Squarespace, it has never been easier for anyone to unlock unbreakable creativity. To find out what that means and to bring your next big idea to life, go to squarespace.com, get a two week free trial, no credit cards offered. And once you love what you have started to build, launch your site and go back to squarespace.com, but this time put slash shambooty, cause that's how you get 10% off a website or a domain. I think your, uh, your treatment of friendship is very, is much more precious, I'd say. Like you have always been very, um, yeah, you're very specific, you're very intentional in who you decide really gets to know you. And I mean, not like in the like, oh yeah, everybody's here, we're all having fun. But like, I mean, like as in that you like, I rely on that person. I like really have invited that person into the fold. I think you've always been much more specific than I have, where I, I've had many years of just like being like, I don't even know if I, I like this human, but I invite them around all the time just because you're, you're like, kind of giving them that grace in a weird way. But I remember, especially when we're younger and in your 20s when you'll have like a hundred people around. And so I think about it as in like, yeah, that now we're probably meeting in the middle in terms of you're being a little more open to what you would naturally wanna do 
well, I'm, I'm trying to find my own halfway. I'm actually being closed off without people realizing it because I am very specific. I'm like, I don't like to feel like I'm in an interview, so I need the conversation to feel very back and forth. And if it's not, then the person, like how we're talking about, there's probably somewhere somebody right now being like, Andrew's a total bitch. I'm aware of that. There's also somebody somewhere being like, she is too hard to be friends with. She's so private. She does not want anybody to know anything about her. Because I'm like, the people that get to be my friends, they're like my real ass friends. What I'm good at though is maintaining. There's, a, there's an unexplained thing that I think is hard to break when you are connected to somebody. Yeah. Regardless of time and space and all of that kind of stuff. But at the same time, um, I think you and I, I think we have room to be closer. Yes. And I think we have room to, um, uh, I don't even know what I would call it. I just think we have a, a, like more journey to be, to be unfair because I'm like, yeah, I think I, I really think this. I'm like, I do not think I have a, a connection with you like I do with literally any other person. I don't think. And I think what's really unique is I'm like, we have, we come from the same place. And that is very rare to like truly be like, not just Toronto girls, Peace City representatives. And that is, yeah, I don't have anybody else that I could be like, no, no, no. I mean like from little to now and our journeys, though we don't do the same thing, are similar in wants, in approach, in just collection of community. There's a closeness here that we can't describe that it doesn't need to be explained any further than this, but it's just there. And it's ready to burst when it's ready to burst, but it's there. If, if that, that's how I see it. I want to ask, I want to talk about the we could be closer bit. Before that, I want to close this conversation by asking a question that's kind of weird. Oh. Not like weird, weird, but this summer I went back to Toronto. And yeah, I was yeah. there for six weeks. Yeah. And I bumped into <laughs> I saw <laughs> I saw this other <laughs> there too. Oh my God. And all of them are still single. <laughs> and I couldn't help but feel like, loser. so it was a loser, loser. <laughs> but like the breakup and all the feelings you had and you're like, um, is it me, is it me? And then later fast forward, you're like, no, it was you. <laughs> Does a part of you in this dynamic feel that way towards me? No. But why not? No, I see, I see our breakup at that time as, um, we had hit the edge of our maturity. We really didn't have it. Like, it didn't need to be as dramatic. It didn't need to be as intense. It didn't need to be as, you know, I always tell people about the Those Girls of Wild Time. I think I learned my, like, so many life lessons within that space. I learned how to say no. I learned how to, I learned what I like to do creatively. I learned who I am as a creative. I, I learned how to work hard when, when there's no promise of something on the other side. And when I think about just how everything was handled, I'm like, yeah, we just unfortunately didn't have, we didn't have the capacity to explain to the other that we actually needed to grow as individuals, but we could still be right here with each other. Mm -hmm. And because those girls are wild for us, so much represented our friendship at the time. It like, it's like one of those things like, yes, we made things for the public, but we really made things for each other. And I think that's hard to describe to people of like, to create something on a mega platform while simultaneously being like, it's really just for this dynamic. It's really just for these two people to find funny. If anybody else finds it funny, cool. If anybody else finds this interesting, cool. But this is just for us. We didn't know how to describe to the other, like at this time, I need this creatively, or I need this business wise, or I need this friendship um, wise. Instead we were like, it's all or nothing if it's all or nothing. Sorry. And so that's how I see that. Not like, um, not like, oh, Shannon doesn't have a whole ton of friends like me, the abundance of girls around me. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm like, no. I just look at it as like, oh, we didn't have uh, the language. We didn't know. But at the same time, my girlfriends now benefit because of my dynamic with you and those girls are wild. They benefit because they, I am more mature. I'm like, I have the understanding. I know when something's just 
not looking like it's gonna go right. I know how to have the comp the conversation. I always think of you with uh, like a, a compliment sandwich. I know how to tell somebody some good shit and then be like, hey, but I don't like this. And then end it with like, but I love your top. And <laughs> <laughs> like, but your hair is so pretty hmm. and <laughs> your skin is thriving and I'm so glad to know you. You know, like I know how to do all those things. And it's like all my lessons of those girls are wild. Do you think that, do you see me and are like, hmm. Maybe I was the issue. Do you see that? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, well, no. Yes and no. What I feel is here is somebody who is really good at making friends and being friends. Yeah. And has exemplified that and worked on the skill. Yeah. And where they are now is a reflection of that work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I look at myself where I'm at now and I'm like where I'm at is a reflection in many ways yeah. of my lack of like attention and care to friendships. Mm, okay. So maybe that, that like... And I think there's a lot of dynamics there because I definitely had friends who have chosen me mm -hmm. and maybe I didn't feel the same choosingness. Yep, yep, yep. And then I've had friends who I've chosen who didn't feel the, so it's like a relationship. Yeah. All parts have to exist. Yeah. And then I reflect on some of the friends I have. Something that actually come to my attention really recently um, is I've like loved my friends for the best of them. Okay. And I've seen them for their best selves. Yeah. And I've seen them in their potential um, as their like highest realized potential. And so when I've had friends go through hard times, they avoid me mm. because they're like, I think that you have this vision of me. Oh, wow. And so I just haven't really felt like I could come to you. No way. Yeah. That's interesting. And I can see that because even when I watched back actually – the video that we did yeah. years ago. Yeah, so this yeah. is like a part three. So yeah, we did yeah, yeah. part one in 2016 or 17. Yeah. And then 2000, two years later, yeah. 2018, and here we are, like damn near six years later. Oh, well, yeah. And I rewatched it to be like, is this redundant? Is there anything that I did we didn't already say? Yeah, because yeah. Because yeah. in that video, we were like, we've come a long way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're like on a flow. I think we're actually identical there. Yeah. I don't really think there's any been like weird hiccups or no, anything. No, no. The progression hasn't been that fast, yeah. which is like, that's the intention I want to set today. Yeah. But the other thing that stood out to me is that I said to you, in our 20s, what was beautiful about our friendship is it was so much based on need, mm -hmm. but we needed each other at the exact same time in the exact same way. Mm -hmm. Because we didn't have great romantic lives and our career was going through different fluxes mm -hmm. and we were trying to figure out ourselves as adults in the world and we were each other's sounding boards. Yeah, yeah. And now as an adult, I don't need anything from you. Yeah. And I really feel that we don't need anything from each other. And when I rewatched that video, I'm like, yeah, but we don't need each other. I don't need you. Don't yeah, need yeah, this. yeah, yeah. And then I was just like, maybe I felt that way at the time. But when I'm coming to you today, I'm coming to you to say that, like, I genuinely need you <laughs> in my life. Yeah, yeah. And I want to be needed by you. Mm, mm -hmm. And I even thought about that because, you know, part of it is like, we'll never have the same friendship we had. But maybe that's not a bad thing especially towards the end, I think about certain things like, I didn't know that you had PCOS. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I literally did not know that yeah. until like a video came out. <laughs> and there were a lot of other things that you had been talking about that I just didn't know about you. So yeah. I was like, there's no space in our friendship as close as I thought we were for Andrea to bring her whole self to me. Mm. And the other day you were sitting here and you were in grief, you, know, mm -hmm, you were mm -hmm. crying. And then I was like, I really want this part of you. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I don't just want the jokey, fun side. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I need you, and I want to be needed by you. Yeah. I guess that's... Well, thank you. I need you, obviously. That's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I mean, I think that's the thing, is need can feel like a very vulnerable word, which is why I think it can come across uh, callous sometimes and also uh, scary because... When we think of need, I think we think about it a little more transactional and not so... Yes, reciprocal. Yeah, like that it's like, sometimes it's scary to think about friendship in that way. That it's like, it's not like, it's not like you're like, tell me your secrets, but you're also like, I just want to feel close. I like feeling close. It's just like... Yeah, I think that's a tricky part because then <laughs> I had this con I had a large conversation about vulnerability yeah. last year with Abba and Preach. Do you love them? Yeah. I love them. But um, they were just saying that women often desire. Closeness. It's like this. But the idea that you're, tell me your saddest secrets mm. and then I'm closer to you. And I don't mean that because genuinely I trust your judgment and I trust, 
I trust that you know how to love yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if you're like, I don't share my PCOS with her, not because I'm not close with her, but for whatever reason, I have a different friend or something like that. So I, I'm trying to be weary of not being like, give me your pain. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, absolutely. But no, but I get it because it's like, that's the thing is it's like, that, that's the weird thing about friendship is it's not all roses. It shouldn't be. Because remember when we first got back together, you were still holding on to like a discomfort, I guess, and still trying to figure out what you even wanted to do. So I think our slow progression has been intentional, but not in a, not in a bad way. Yeah. <laughs> Just in, I think, in a, in, a nat in a natural way. And I think, and I, I'll say this even from my own side, a lot of my friends in the last little while have been that for me, where maybe I've known you six, seven years, but we would say we've only gotten close in the last two. And so I'll see them in the same way that I'm like, it's, we've been in a slow progression, a slow progression of like getting us to the dynamic that we suit and what we want versus, um, yeah, versus just being like, well, I know you, so come to dinner, let's go. It's like, no, we don't know. Let's like, let's just kind of see, let's just let it, let it build and build and build and, and then it'll figure itself out. So maybe that's me more than you. I'm like, that might be my dynamic as a friend is yeah. just kind of seeing. It's a, I think I was that way. And I think that that's, it's good to be that way. Yeah. I think what makes my situation different now is I feel like this is a good time for me to start this mm -hmm. because I don't think I really understood friendship. Mm -hmm. Even interestingly, when we did that video, I didn't even have kids then. Yeah. But I was still so weary of friends, people needing more from me than I felt that I could provide yep, yep, and yep. expectation yep. Um, and inconvenience. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which now <laughs> I have like less space for all those things, but I'm almost more receptive to the idea of them. Yeah. Because maybe I know on the other side of that I, I think I know what I'm missing now in a way that I don't think I really understood then. Um, what do you think you're missing? Like, yeah, just the genuine joy of friendship. Community. Community, friendship, of somebody who has no reason to love you. Mm -hmm. They just do. Mm. You're not your sister. You're not having sex with them. You're not raising <laughs> their kids. <laughs> no, I get th That's actually, that's it. That's basically, that's that's it. Yeah, like somebody who does not have to be here. They're just choosing to, <laughs> like, it is like you. I think it's actually a really good um, button to end on because that makes me feel like what I hope for, what I'm setting intention for is to like recapture the heart of those girls are wild mm. and the friendship there. And then to leave space for it to be something different uh -huh. mm -hmm. without the pressure for it to be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Grown women are wild. Thank you for watching this video. If you have not watched the other two videos I did with Andrea, one was done like eight years ago and one was done like five or six years ago. They're worth watching, especially I think watching this one and then going back. Please in the comment section below, let me know what your current commandments are when it comes to friendship. And if you wanna give any advice to old girl here, um, yeah, I'm open to it. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the truth hurts. <laughs>